I want to start this video off by saying, I absolutely love the Donkey Kong games. This is not a video hating on the games. That said, I've come to realize, it sucks being a Donkey Kong fan. I say it sucks being a Donkey Kong fan because of my love-hate relationship with the franchise. My love, like most fans, started with the three Donkey Kong Country games, or DKC games, on the Super Nintendo. These 2D side-scrolling platformer games included some of the most creative levels that my six-year-old self had seen, and I had seen a lot. To this day, the games are still fun, challenging, and mesmerizing. They also include great music. Shout out to David Wise. Then around the same time as these DKC games, the Donkey Kong Country television series premiered in Canada in 1997. Those in the US would have to wait until 1998 for the show. But as a young Canadian boy, I was super excited I now had a television series of my favorite game series just a year after DKC3 was released. The show was one of the earliest television series to be entirely computer animated, matching the artistic style of the video games, and would go on to last three seasons and produce 40 episodes. It was truly a time to be alive as a Donkey Kong fan, and it was only getting better. In 1999, on the brink of the new millennium, Donkey Kong 64 was released on the Nintendo 64, the first and only 3D platform game in the Donkey Kong franchise. For anyone who remembers, this was the must-have game at the time and I still have vivid memories of my parents gifting me this game and the pure excitement I had to finally play it. Donkey Kong 64 was the subject of universal acclaim at its release, and critics praised the game's length and large amount of content brought by the game's tasks and different playable characters. Though the game was not a revolutionary step like the DKC series on the Super Nintendo, as other similar games like Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie had already been released, it was still a huge step for the franchise, and I was excited to see where it would go from here. But little did fans know, disappointment was right around the corner. In 2002, in what I consider a devastating moment in video game history, Rare was acquired by Microsoft. And so all rights for the original games and characters, except for the Donkey Kong games, as they were trademarked by Nintendo, became owned by Microsoft. For Nintendo fans, it was goodbye to characters like Banjo and Kazooie and Conker. But hey, at least we still had Donkey Kong. Unfortunately, this is where shit became bananas, and not in a good way. From 2003 to 2008, fans experienced what I consider the dark ages of the Donkey Kong franchise. First, we got the hot pile of garbage that is the series Donkey Konga, a series developed by Namco for the GameCube. If you don't know what Donkey Konga is, then consider yourself lucky. The game is like Guitar Hero, where the intent is to play the game with a special controller called the DK Bongos that resemble two bongo drums. Somehow the game didn't get horrible reviews, and we were given two sequels, with the third installment only being released in Japan for some reason. Soon after, we got Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, also on the GameCube, the first Donkey Kong platformer since the release of Donkey Kong 64 to not be developed by Rare. Due to the change in developers, Jungle Beat was very different than the previous DKC games in gameplay, characters, and even Donkey Kong's personality, who has shown to be more aggressive. This game was weird because it's a platforming game, but to control Donkey Kong you must use those damn DK Bongo drums. Whose stupid idea was this? Then on the Wii we got Donkey Kong Barrel Blast, a lackluster racing game that would go on to receive a generally negative response, garnering a meta score of 46 as of the making of this video. The loss of Rare to Microsoft was being felt hard, and the future of the Donkey Kong franchise looked dark. But just as all hope was starting to be lost, there was a glimmer of hope. Introducing Donkey Kong Country Returns, a game released on the Wii in 2010 and later the 3DS, and the reboot the franchise had desperately needed. Now at this point, I was pretty much over the Donkey Kong games, and didn't even realize this game existed until years later. It wasn't until 2014, when Tropical Freeze was released on the Wii U, that I learned about these games. And it was the best surprise. DKC Returns and Tropical Freeze felt like the DKC games that I grew up with and loved so much, while still feeling fresh. The games were creative, challenging, and I was completely obsessed. But this is where my hate starts to come in, and why I think it sucks to be a Donkey Kong fan. The last Donkey Kong game that we got was Tropical Freeze, which was released in 2014. 2014. Yes, we got a port of the game on the Switch in 2018, but it was still the same game as the one four years ago. The only difference being you can now play as Funky Kong, in case you wanted to play with the biggest handicap ever. The dude has five hearts, can jump on spikes, and can breathe underwater. Both DKC Returns and Tropical Freeze received highly favorable reviews, 
and as of 2021, have sold over 15 million copies between all consoles the games were available on. Which is even more impressive when you account for the fact that the marketing of the games was minimal. So, with the very positive reception of the latest Donkey Kong games in the DKC series, and with the high sales to back it up, why aren't we getting more Donkey Kong games? Tropical Freeze sold, and continues to sell, better than original entries in many other Nintendo franchises. And so it's hard to argue that a new Donkey Kong game wouldn't have enormous sales potential. For me, it's just frustrating that such an amazing franchise gets so little attention, whereas Pokemon fans seem to get a new Pokemon game or DLC every year. In 22 alone, Pokemon fans got Arceus and Scarlet and Violet. This year, Donkey Kong fans are getting four new Donkey Kong LEGO sets. Yay. However, there is hope. As many know, video game developer Retro Studios, who developed DKC Returns and Tropical Freeze, has lately been focusing their resources on Metroid Prime 4, a massively delayed game that was first announced in 2017. But as of May 5th, 2023, there were 12 production-related job listings on the developer's careers page, which featured the following identifier. Announced by Nintendo in January 2019, Retro Studios is currently in the midst of developing Metroid Prime 4 for the Nintendo Switch. But there was also one job listing that makes no mention to Metroid Prime 4 at all, and seeks applicants proficient at conceiving original gameplay and AI concepts, and developing them for a 3D action adventure title. It's possible this listing is also related to Metroid Prime 4, but perhaps it can mean that Retro Studios has gained enough ground on development of Metroid Prime 4 that they are finally embarking on its next project, which perhaps could be a new Donkey Kong game. Perhaps it's a sequel to Donkey Kong 64. Of course, this is all just speculation, but it's hard not to be hopeful that we'll be seeing another Donkey Kong game soon, when just a month earlier, a news article was posted on the Switch with the title, Get to Know the King of Swing, an article showing the history of Donkey Kong and providing fans with some fun facts. Either Nintendo is just teasing the Donkey Kong fans, or it's a clue to what's to come. But still, how long do us Donkey Kong fans have to wait? Wait for something that isn't even confirmed. But as hard as it is being a Donkey Kong fan, I'm just grateful we have the amazing DKC series, games old and new, to keep me occupied. What are your thoughts? Do you agree it sucks to be a Donkey Kong fan? Let us know, and thanks for watching.